Thank, Thank you, Madam Speaker. This evening on Earth Day, I am debating an issue I raised on February 19th during question period. The essence of my question was to highlight the inconsistency of this government between what they are saying and actually doing when the rights of indigenous peoples are concerned and in the fight against climate crisis. While these issues may seem different, they are intricately connected. First, I want to underline that no communities on this land are fighting more for the natural world than indigenous peoples. Indigenous peoples are caretakers of Mother Earth and realize and respect her gifts and her power. They advocate that we must take only what we need, we must use great care and be aware of how we take and how much so that future generations will not be put in peril. In 2015, during the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the Prime Minister recognized that, quote, indigenous peoples have known for thousands of years how to care for our planet. The rest of us have a lot to learn and no time to waste. No time to waste. Two years later, using public funds, his government bought the Trans Mountain Pipeline. The finance minister at the time cited that this project was in the national interest and furthermore, an investment in Canada's future. This decision will not only devastate critical ecosystems such as the home of resident killer whales, but it will also vehemently was vehemently opposed by indigenous nations whose territory it would be impacted. This history repeats itself again and again. Today, it is playing out in the land of the Inuit people. Funding the oil and mining industry, buying a pipeline, and sponsoring nuclear energy that will have disastrous consequences on ecosystems tens of thousands of years from now, this is not the work of reparation or climate leaders. Disregarding the voice of elders and youth, hereditary and elected chiefs, and consulting after the fact are not consequential steps towards reconciliation. Inconsistencies, incertitude, even deception. This is the perspective of so many who live on this land known as Canada when it comes to this government's decisions pertaining to the climate crisis and reconciliation. On this Earth Day, it is urgent that this government act with courage and compassion for the planet and all the people who live on it. For the youth striking every Friday from school, desperate for a response they can believe in, what does this government say to them? Because development and surplus will mean nothing when the last ancestral cedar tree will be cut down, when the last herd of woodland caribou will be extinguished, or when every drop of our rivers are polluted. I can hear the inevitable groans from naysayers now, the ones who will dismiss the words of a tree hugger. How have we become so disconnected from the natural world to believe that we are separate and above it? Honestly committing to respecting the rights of Indigenous peoples and fighting the climate crisis is not something you can do intermediately or without conviction. Canadians need a government that will willfully, without detour or compromise, commit to the future and the future of the generations to come, one where our children have a right and an understood responsibility to the natural world. We must listen, learn, and implement the knowledge of the First People who know the land, its rivers and forests, and how to live in harmony and respect with all forms of life. This government needs to lead this transition, this necessary culture shift, not in 10 years, but now. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister Secretary to the Minister of uh, in Crown Indigenous Relations. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I would like to thank uh, the Honourable Colleague from Fredericton for raising this important issue and acknowledge that uh, we're gathered here on the unceded territory of the Algonquin people. Uh, and I also wish her and everyone a happy Earth Day, as it's a historical day in many ways uh, in, in the issues uh, that she had highlighted. Um, first and foremost, uh, the Government of Canada is renewing Canada's relationship with Indigenous people based on the affirmation of rights, respect, cooperation, and partnership. Since 2016, we have taken a range of important measures that contribute to a renewed, respectful, um, Crown Indigenous relationship that align both Section 35 of our Constitution and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. As my, as my friend knows, uh, she was part of C-15 deliberations today, where we were able to pass this uh, milestone uh, legislation through, uh, through our committee and off to the other place. As of today, nine federal laws that refer to the Declaration have been implemented. In regards to the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which, um, which again, um, is a very important document, as it indicated, uh, this, uh, this historical document will now become Canadian law uh, within weeks. Um, this legislation represents a fundamental shift in the relationship with Indigenous Peoples by recognizing rights articulated through the Declaration. We're committed to ongoing discussions to make progress together, advancing reconciliation, improving community well-being and renewing Crown Indigenous relationships. 
In a nutshell, C15 is about protecting and promoting indigenous rights, including the rights to self-determination and self-government, equality and non-discrimination on the basis for forging stronger relationships with First Nations, Inuit and Métis. The Government of Canada has developed or updated policies and guidance to be consistent with both the Declaration and Canada's constitutional framework. These policies assist, assist federal officials in their work when it involves Indigenous peoples and helps con contribute to the implementation of the Declaration. We are at over 150 active negotiation tables with more than 500 communities representing over 1 million Indigenous people to support their visions of self-determination. And our government has also co-developed a new innovative recognition of rights policy framework with the BC government and the First Nation Summit to improve the treaty process and to better advance self-determination in British Columbia. Our government remains committed to a renewed and respectful relationship with Indigenous people. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Fredericton. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Okay. And, and my hope is that in advancing Indigenous rights, we will also, you know, move towards addressing the climate crisis as well. So we must think about what is truly at stake here, to think about our children. The Minister of Environment and Climate Change has mentioned his daughter many times in his speeches. He even mentioned how she has urged him to do more. The youth are the ones who bring me hope when I feel defeated. They are the ones who give me the energy to use my voice to be part of the solution. They are the leaders of today because they understand the emergency. Grade three curriculum covers life cycles, biodiversity, endangered species. They get it. Why can't our elected leaders? From young and Anishinaabe activist Autumn Peltier fighting for clean water for all to Loic Thomas from New Brunswick, who by the age of four had personally collected 1,000 bags of litter. They remind me that this willingness to protect the environment and the curiosity about the world surrounding us is inherent in the human spirit. This government needs to act in the best interest of the youth of this country, the ones that will have to find the solutions to the catastrophic problems our government is not courageous enough to face head on now. Thank you. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations. Madam Speaker, we share in the vision articulated by uh, the member opposite. Uh, today, the, the Prime Minister uh, in, uh, in Washington um, committed at the Earth Summit to reduce uh, and to meet um, our, our targets set in Paris uh, and exceed it by, by 2030, uh, and, and also to meet our 2050 net zero emission target. So this is a historical day in, in many ways. And I just want to reiterate that our government passed key legislation to support Indigenous languages, affirming Indigenous jurisdictions over child welfare and introduced legisla legislation to implement UNDRIP, and it has uh, progressed through the legislative process uh, in the last uh, several days. But while we have made a lot of progress together, we know that much more work needs to be done in order to build on the investments we've made and to keep moving this important relationship and our country forward. Thank you, Madam Speaker.